Hi, I'm uh, Matt Butler from Amazon, and uh, today I'll be discussing FraudFox, uh, adaptable fraud detection in the real world, um, which I co-created with my collaborators, uh, Yi Fan and Christos Folustos. Um, so today we'll be going over, you know, the motivation and problems uh, associated with this with this domain, fraud detection. Um, we've broken it down into four sub-problems um, just to deal with the different complexities, which I'll go into more detail later on, and then some uh, results and uh, conclusions. So um, how suspicious is Smith, you know, trying to buy $500 shoes on Monday at 3 a.m.? And so, you know, how do we make these split-second determinations of whether or not someone uh, is a good customer or, uh, or requires more scrutiny, um, given all of the different variables that are associated with, it, with an order uh, in an e-commerce transaction? And so we've sort of broken down this motivation into two uh, predominant research problems that we work on. The first one is, you know, because we're considering an ensemble model, it's sort of a a, a subsystem of a greater, larger fraud detection system. You know, how do we want to merge the risk scores? You know, from this handful of risk assessment modules or oracles in this adversarial environment. And then, two, given historical data and dynamic business restrictions, which orders should we pass? And you know, versus which ones should we send for a human investigation? So, the problem: given k uh, risk assessing oracles and uh, historical data. Um, you know, we want to find uh, the oracle weights um, and to meet the immediate uh, business and goals or business goals and constraints. And we want to be prepared for unpredictable uh, business constraints that might be uh, present in the near future. And we want to do that as easy as, as possible. And so the overview of this solution is that we've broken it down essentially into four different parts, uh, four sub-problems. The first being fraud adaption. You know. Yeah, like in a supervised learning environment, how do we just have a current model and then we want to update it once we receive new observations? Part two is uh, anti-gaming. You know, given that those observations are actually coming from an adversarial and non-stationary environment, um, how do we deal with that bias and that noise when going to update our, our model? Um, part three, the decision surface itself. I mean, once we have a model, how do we use the information that it generates to make those decisions on whether or not we should investigate or whether or not we should pass this order? What does that decision surface look like and how do we arrive at it? And finally, business adaption. Given that the constraints on the business uh, can change quite rapidly and be unpredictable, how do we actually move from one solution to another in an optimal way without, uh, you know, without having to recompute everything? So. Part one, fraud adaption. So this is a you know standard supervised learning context where we're given a new uh, order with a class label, so we know what the outcome of that order was, um, and we want to update the weight of each classifier, so our oracles, in order just to maximize classification accuracy. Our solution to uh, subproblem one um, is to use the common filter as a means to blend um, the uh, the scores coming from those uh, different uh, oracles. And so, you know, our current model um, and then will be combined with a, a new labeled observation to arrive at uh, our updated model using the uh, standard extent Kalman filter uh, equations. For part two or subproblem two, anti-gaming, um, we are given, you know, several labeled orders. Uh, these are the d-dimensional vectors um, generated from a non-stationary and adversarial environment. Um, and we're given the decision surface. Um, if we want to find an appropriate weight uh, for each order uh, for when updating the model to maximize classification accuracy on the recent time period. Um, so the, this sort of has a two-part solution. The first part deals directly with the adversarial nature of, of, of our environment. And so what we've observed is that when once we derive this decision surface or this hyperbolic uh, curve that we have here, um, we actually um, uh, see that you know fraudsters will tend to fly very close to it or place orders that sort of you know are right on the cusp of being uh, investigated, and so um, you know w w w they tend to hover around that that's that decision surface there, and so we model this relationship basically as a a, a weight to distance, and so the closer uh, a point lies to that line, the more weight that it that it receives, and there's lots of different ways that you can, you know, approach how to how to derive those exact uh, weights. 
Um, the, one of the approaches that we use is uh, modeling it using a parameterized exponential distribution. But what essentially will happen here is that when we weight more heavily along these x's is we actually push, would in this case, push this line further down. And so next iteration, we would be, be able to, uh, to catch them. The second part uh, deals with non-stationarity. Um, and so we basically want to gradually forget previously learned patterns because, you know, as uh, fraudsters are adapting to us, um, you know, they're not as useful anymore. And so uh, in uh, a Kalman filter framework, this essentially uh, exponential forgetting is essentially growing the covariance matrix or making it larger so that the model is becoming un more uncertain about the past. And so what we've done and shown in the paper, we derived a couple of new update equations for the Kalman filter to accommodate a weight A that basically allows for m more weight uh, being applied to more recent um, transactions, which uh, essentially creates this, this exponential forgetting. For subproblem three, uh, the decision surface, um, in this case we're given the uh, cost of a false alarm and false dismissal, as well as the uh, cost for us performing an investigation, and we have an order with suspiciousness score S and value V, and what we want to do is find the best decision we should do, you know, pass versus investigate, and the expected value of this order under our best decision. Our solution to uh, subproblem three, and, and I apologize, there's a lot of details here again, um, is essentially to take a cost benefit analysis approach where we have a, a contingency table um, of different uh, outcomes based on whether or not we guess if someone is honest or whether or not they're uh, trying to commit fraud. Um, and so in that contingency table, we're considering things like, you know, the price of the item, uh, profit margin, cost of investigation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then we can derive from first principles uh, our equation, um, this is the uh, SH max, um, which naturally is this hyperbolic um, uh, curve in our 2D decision space. And this allows us to uh, prioritize uh, orders and investigations um, based on uh, sort of an optimal decision. Uh, Subproblem so four, uh, business adaption, um, is where we're given uh, sort of the M business constraints, uh, for example, the number of available human investigators is one, um, and uh, the time varying component of their various thresholds, we want to find an optimal set of solutions that satisfy the various thresholds of the uh, M business constraints. Our solution to subproblem four um, is to compute the uh, Pareto frontier of the solution space where taking, we're taking into account each of the uh, M business constraints. And so, um, what we end up with is that uh, we have a, a, a Pareto frontier which represents the non-dominated points. And so each of these are an optimal solution when varying the, uh, the constraint settings. And so as the business constraints can change dynamically um, and, and unpredictably, we, we can move along this Pareto frontier to find different optimal solutions given the constraints at that time. Computing the uh, Pareto frontier can be done in several ways, uh, such as using a, a grid search or um, uh, using a heuristic optimization algorithms like particle swarm optimizations, as, as we had done. For our first experiment, we have a, a simulation study where we have a couple of oracles, uh, one that's very correlated with the target variable of fraud or not fraud, and the other that is really uncorrelated with it, um, doesn't have a lot of information. And so that is sort of the case for the first 30 uh, data points. And then there's a shock where those two oracles actually switch. The one that was previously uncorrelated is now uh, very correlated with the target variable and, and vice versa. And so at that time, of course, you know, there's a, a huge increase in the amount of loss associated with those models. Um, and the blue line represents a model that just never updates and you can see that it actually never recovers and continues to have that amount of loss going forward. Now using the common filters we actually see that we can kind of decrease that loss over time uh, and return to sort of the stationary state that we had before. Um, the green line represents a common filter, um, the canonical one, the canonical extended common filter without any uh, weight updates and with that one you still do recover and you have an improvement. Um, however using the uh, a non-stationary version of the extended common filter with the uh, with the adaptable weights we're able to improve even faster and so we were able to arrive back at the uh, previous uh, loss um, uh, much sooner than the other two methods. In the real world uh, fraud Frox has been implemented within a larger uh, live fraud prevention system. Um, with this introduction that's the dashed uh, black line there is a visible reduction in fraud losses and so 
our, uh, the system without Fraud Fox is shown there as the blue dash line. And then uh, that system with the fraud facts being implemented uh, is shown there as a, as a solid uh, orange line. And you can see a visible reduction in those losses uh, once, that, once it was introduced. In conclusion, uh, fraud Frox is, uh, provides automatic adaptation, uh, provides user selectable operation, uh, it's scalable uh, and effective. Thank you very much. Um, this concludes our discussion today on uh, FraudFox. Um, please enjoy the rest of the workshop, and now we can take uh, live questions.